I want to just welcome those that are online, those that are in our overflow, and you. We're going to do something very special this morning. I really enjoyed the first part as we mix the scriptures with the songs and tell the story of, of the Christmas story of Jesus' birth. But I really wanted to come today, and I really felt that we will take communion and we will renew covenant with God. And as we do that, I'm going to share with you, because it took me, I think I was in my 40s before I really understood what God meant by making covenant with us. But the whole thing that you see in the Bible is that God is a covenant-making and a covenant-keeping God. The Old Testament is the Old Covenant. The New Testament is called the New Covenant. The whole of the Bible is about God is a covenant-maker and that he does that so that we have security, so that we have certainty, and so that we have a sacredness to our relationship with him. And so he wants us to know for sure where we stand with him, what he's committed and vowed himself to be to us. And when you really begin to look at this, it brings to you a stability and a strength to your faith. And I see the God of the Bible is saying, I'm offering all that I am and all that I have to you. And I'm making a covenant binding myself to you. And we are saying to God, Everything that I have and I am, I commit to you. You are my God, you are my King and my Lord. And in the Psalms 105, it says this, He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. You see, a covenant is not a promise. It's more than that. It's not a pledge. It is something that is an unbreakable agreement between God and people where God is binding himself to us to be our support, to be our provider, to be our protection, to be our defender, and that we are to give ourselves to him in a complete trust and submission as he is our God, he is our Lord, he is our leader, he is our all in all. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is a covenant that we make. In fact, the word covenant means to cut because covenants were sealed in the Bible, through the shedding of blood. It was an animal or animals that would be shedding blood. It would, this is sacred, this is serious what we're doing. It would signify that. Now, in the Bible over and over again, God would talk about, like, here's one passage in 1 Kings 8, 23. He says, Lord God of Israel, there's no God in heaven above or earth below like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. See, he, God would make covenant. He made covenant with Noah. He made covenant with Abraham. He made covenant with Moses. He made covenant with David. He walked in covenant relationship with Israel. And then Jesus Christ came to establish the new covenant for you and I. The whole basis of our relationship is covenant. You know, something today, people aren't committing themselves to each other. So relationships are, we're just chilling. There's no commitment to chilling. We're in covenant. And God is saying, I'm letting you know because the enemy loves to tell you you're insecure, you're unsafe, you're not good enough, all of these things so that you stand back. But when you understand covenant, you run towards because you realize what it's based on. Amen. So the prophets told us that God was going to make a new covenant with us. It would be greater than the old covenant. And then Jesus, when he was getting ready to go to the cross, he sat down and had the covenant meal, right? The last supper. And he said, this is my body, which broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is my blood, which was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I want us to understand covenant. I'm only going to take like 10, 12 minutes, but I want you to hold with me. When people made covenant back in the times of Abraham, they would make like covenants between one family, which a family is not just the immediate, it's the extended. One family to another family. And they would discuss, negotiate terms for up to three years because they knew that this is binding us, that we are saying, everything I have is yours. Your battles are my battles. Your needs are my needs. My blessings are your blessings. 
that we're binding ourselves, and it would go up to eight generations. So you would not even think about if you had a blessing, not sharing it with your covenant partner, or if you were under attack, you would run straight to your covenant partner because we, everything I have is yours and yours are mine, and we are binding ourselves together. It is like an exchange of life. All of that I have is yours. All that you have is mine. So I want us to look at this quickly and then look at what God has done with us. In the old times of Abraham, whenever those two families agreed upon terms, then they would get animals. They would get a cow, a goat, a ram, and some pigeons and turtle doves, and they would cut the large animals in half, and the heads of the family would stand in the blood. Then they would vow to one another, even when blood is spilling, I'm committed to you. That if I, if I do not walk out the fullness of this covenant, may the land vomit me out. May our women not bear children. May our crops not come to harvest. This is serious, what we're doing here. And when you look at that and you read the story then in Genesis 15, where Abraham is going to God, because God had told Abraham, go to this land. I'm going to bless you. Even though you're old, you're going to be the father of multitudes. So Abraham goes. He and his wife go. They still don't have children. So Abraham starts to get discouraged. And he says, well, God, I'm old now. And I guess all that you've blessed me with, I'm going to have to leave to this man that works for me. And then God said, no, you won't. I told you you would have a child. And look at the stars. As many stars as you see, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham says, how can I know for sure? And God says, go get a cow. Go get a ram, go get a goat, go get a pigeon and a turtle dove, cut them in half. Abraham knows this is a covenant sacrifice. This is when you cut covenant, when you bind yourself to one another. I don't know what it felt like to him, but it's one thing to make a covenant with a rich guy. It's another thing to make covenant with God Almighty. And God is saying, Abraham, you want security, you want certainty. I'm coming down to a level you understand. I'm binding myself in a covenant with you. And he tells him what his history, what his future is going to be, how it's going to unfold. And then he says, in Genesis 15, God made a covenant with Abraham. You realize that what we come to is God is not making a promise or a pledge. He said, I am covenanting. I'm binding myself to you that I will do exactly what I said. Now, after families would cut the covenant, they would do an exchange. So they would exchange mantles. Then they would exchange weapons. Then they would exchange names. Then they would seal it with a meal. But what does it mean to exchange mantles? It means to share or give your authority. All that you have authority over, you give to your partner. All they have authority over, they give to you. You see this in the Bible when the prophet Elijah gave his mantle to the prophet Elisha. And he's saying, all the prophetic authority I have, I'm giving to you. But when you look at this, God is in covenant with Moses. He sends Moses to Egypt. Whose authority was Moses doing those plagues with in Egypt? His or God's? God's. He's standing in an authority that Moses never possessed because God is saying, in fact, even as he was on his way to Egypt, God came and said, hey, we need to be in covenant here. So God began to say, here, my authority I give to you. If you go on, the next would be the belt of weapons they would exchange in a covenant ceremony, which means your battles are my battles. Your wars are my wars. Your enemies are my enemies. That they would exchange this. And you look in the Bible, that's exactly what God did. When Abraham had battles, they took his wife, they took him from her, and they're going to keep him. God comes and disturbs the Pharaoh, the, the leader of Egypt, in a dream and says, all the women are going to be barren in your land if you don't return that woman back to that man. God came and fought his battles. But all through Israel... You see two things. Either they're turning to God as their partner and God is winning battles for them. He's parting, see, he's stopping the sun. He's bringing angels in that cause chaos in the enemy's camp. He's winning battles that only God could win. Or they're not turning to God and they're turning to other things to fight their battles. Assyria, Egypt, 
or Babylon. And God is saying, why are you breaking covenant with me? We're bound together. They weren't treating God as their covenant partner. The next thing they would do is exchange names. Now, this is big. A name represents your identity, your standing, your inheritance. Now think of this. God was known as the God of all nations. Abraham was just a man. But now God came and made a covenant with Abraham. Now Abraham is known as the father of nations, and God is known as the God of Abraham. He exchanged names. Forever, all the time, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is covenant. This isn't a pledge, a promise. This isn't pie in the sky. This is coming down to a level that you can understand. I am binding myself to you. I will not leave you. I will never forsake you. After they would go through all of that, they would have a meal where they would pledge themselves where they would come and bring this covenant together. In the New Testament, they had been foretold that God would make a new covenant when Jesus came for three years, he negotiated terms with the disciples. He's telling them, I want you to believe that I am who I say I am. I, if you believe in me, you're going to have eternal life. If you don't believe in me, you're going to remain separated from God and under wrath. He's telling them, I want your whole heart. I want your whole heart. I want your full obedience. If you hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you will give your life to me, you will find life eternal. He's calling them to a place to trust him, to surrender to him, to let him be God in their life. Not a religion, not a moral code, him. To give themselves to him. And then he's pledging them, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That if you will abide in me, you will bear much fruit. That what is impossible for you is possible for me. And he's telling them, this is what kind of relationship we're coming into. And then it says in John 17, that they accepted the words Jesus gave them. They agreed to the terms. They accepted them and they said, now they know that everything you've given me is from you, Father. For I've given them the words you gave me and they received them. And he says, now be glorified. Why, what's next? The cutting of the covenant. That's when he went to the cross. That was the cutting of the covenant. The greater the covenant, the greater the sacrifice. The Son of God came for the intention of giving his life to sinful humanity. And it says he was bruised and beaten for our sins. His blood was shed to cancel our debt. By his stripes, we were healed. We who were enemies were God, have now been reconciled to God. We who were far away have now been adopted and made sons and daughters. Jesus became the lamb who was slain for the sins of the world. He cut covenant with humanity, with his son, so that we would know for sure that God is not just pledged or made promises or just forgiven our sins. He's bound himself to those who put their faith in him. And when Jesus is dying on the cross in Matthew 27, it says the curtain in the Holy of Holies, which separated people from the presence of God, it was very thick, ripped from the top down to the bottom. The sun went behind and was eclipsed. The earth shook. The rocks split open. Tombs were open where the saints of old would come out. All of creation is reacting as God is cutting covenant with humanity. And then it's the exchange of mantles. Now think of this. We're coming into covenant with God. What kind of authority does he have? All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So go and make disciples. The creator of heaven and earth says, I have authority to set free, to forgive, to bind, to loose. And I've given you power over every work of the devil. You are not a victim. You are a conqueror. It's not your ability, I'm giving you my mantle. It says that he gave his authority, the keys of the kingdom to the church. That's the born again believers in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing is impossible for you. You can move mountains because you've been given authority. Not your authority, his authority. It's not my ability. It's him, me trusting the one that made covenant with me. 
When you look at the scope of his wisdom, his magnitude, what is he saying to you? I give you my authority. Now, all that you have authority over, trust me with that. Your family, your future, your finances. Stop carrying it for yourself. Trust me, the plans I have for you are good. I, even before you were in the womb, I had purposes for you. You didn't choose me, I chose you. And I appointed you to bear fruit. Release what you have authority over and watch what I can begin to do through you to that. The covenant. But when we don't trust God, we hold back everything because we're afraid we're going to lose or we're afraid of this threat or that threat. We're not walking as the, though our covenant partner is faithful. The next is the belt of weapons. In covenant, you are saying your battles are my battles. We're in partnership. And the God of universe comes to us and he's saying to us, you are not alone. Your battles are my battles. I will be your defender. I will be your rear guard. I will be your strong tower. I will be your refuge and your safe place. It doesn't even matter what people plan for you. Keep your eyes upon me because I will see you get through. You don't have to fight them. Watch me and I'll make a way where there was no way. There's no weapon formed against you that can prosper because the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. I fought Paul's battles and won every one. I fought Daniel's battles and shut the mouths of lions. I fought Gideon's battles, David's battles, Israel's battles, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's battles. And I can fight your battles. Hallelujah. We don't have to sit there and be afraid. Our weapons are so ineffective. We're trying to manage people, trying to push people. We're trying to get this. Get, lay down your weapons and say, Father, I want you to be my covenant partner. I don't need to fight all of this. I'm going to set my eyes upon you and watch you do what I've not been able to do. Hallelujah. I'm serious. How many of you have tried to fight for something, get something, get something? Finally, you give up and say, God, I give it to you. And then he does what you've not been able to do. We're in covenant. I'm not an orphan. I belong to him. The next is the name, exchanging of names. A name is everything. It's your standing, your identity, your inheritance. And you got to realize we were separated. And the devil loves to tell us we're nothing. We can't do it. We're this, we're that. We're... That's all a bunch of hogwash, as my dad would say. The truth of the matter is, I was far away, but now I've been brought into the family of God. I who had nothing, but now a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I may come boldly into the presence of God as a much loved son, because it's not me that merited that, it's what he did on the cross that made it possible. Wash my guilty conscience, bring me into the family of God. The old has passed away, behold, all things have become new. And he says, I give you my name. Come on, I give you my name. You, what does that mean? When anything comes against me, I don't stand in my name, I'm in his name. Seriously, I don't have to fear. When I was in Africa, there were demonic things happening. I need not be afraid because I'm standing in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's telling us, we use his name when we go before the Father. It's not you that have the right to be there. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. He gave me his name. When you begin to face forces, you're not there fighting in your name, your experience, your ability. You're standing in the name of Jesus. And it says that we've been seated with him in high places, that there is no other name in heaven or earth higher than his name. Come on. We're not victims here. Don't be intimidated. Remember who you're in partnership with. You came and you and I were sons of men and women, but now we're sons of the Most High. He came in as the Son of God, but he left as the Son of Man. He gave us his name and took our name. We are called children of God. This is the exchange. So what does that mean? It means that I receive. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. 
and I can't keep it. But he bound himself in covenant with me. He's given himself to me, my identity, my standing, my rights as children of God. They've been given to me as a partner. He's bound himself to that. So what do I give him? I no longer live for my name. I live for his name. I'm not living for people to applaud me, make, make a fuss about me. I'm living that he may be glorified. I'm living that the light of him may be seen in other people's life. I'm living to fulfill the mission that he has given me. Whatever you gave me, let it be done with my life. Let it not be wasted on chasing trivial things. I live for his name. That's what it means to be in partnership. And when we do that, we come every time we come to communion to renew covenant. This is my body which was broken for you. Tears should come to our eyes. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant which I've poured out for you. For you. Not you. You. For you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. And he's saying this. He's talking to the God that holds all authority. And he says, it's easier for the mountains to disappear than for me to break my covenant with you. So we want to come and take communion right now. But I want you, I'm going to ask you to receive. You'll come and get the elements, but you hold them. And I want you to pray. I want you to open your heart to God. I want you to put your focus on him. I want you to thank him, bless him, honor him for making a covenant with you. And then I will come and will lead us to receive this. I want to ask you if you'll come out the left and go back the right so we can have a good flow to it. But we'll line up our leaders, all of our pastors, our elders, and ministers. They're going to be right here to serve you. But we want to renew the covenant with the Lord. Amen? So let's all rise up to our feet. As they get settled, I'm going to pray, so just bow with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come here and recognize this is not a religious ceremony. We're coming here with the one who initiated the very idea of this. You want us to know that these aren't promises. This is unbreakable bonds that you're making with us. Hell will lie to us. Fears will try to come against us, but you've given us solid ground to stand on that you have bound yourself in covenant with us. So God, let something deep inside of me be renewed to you. Renew my faith. Renew my trust. Renew my surrender to you as Lord, as God, as my all in all. So Father, let the overflow, let the sanctuary be filled with your presence as we come before you now. So I want to ask you, come out to the left. Come and you have different places to receive. Take both elements. Go back to your seat and just hold them and pray quietly. Let's go ahead. Begin to come. Go. Go. Above all kingdoms, 
above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the world, there's no way to measure what you want. back and stand there close your eyes thank him thank him for what he's given you thank him that our guilty conscience can be wiped clean because of his sacrifice thank him that he comes down to a term people may not have stood faithfully with you but he's saying I will never leave you I will never forsake you come and honor him for what he has bound himself to you we want to renew this covenant the richness of it the depth of it we want it to come and knock down those insecurities those fears those lies of hell so just close your eyes and talk to the lord right now honor the Lord for what he gives to you open your heart to him Lord we just thank you we praise you right now we praise you, Lord. Draw my heart into that place that I trust you. Draw my heart into that place that I know I'm not alone. I am not an orphan. I'm not by myself trying to navigate this world. That you are my covenant partner. That you will never leave. That you are here to take me through the battles. To take me through the difficulties. That there is nothing that is formed against me that can stop you. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. I want my eyes upon you. I want my hope found in you. I want to trust you with the things that are against me, with illnesses, with financial concerns, with people that I love and I see them struggling. God, I want to come to my partner in fullness of faith to know that you know every single thing I face and bind yourself to walk with me and bring about your victory. Our leaders are now going to be served as they're beginning to receive the cup and the bread. I want you sincerely, everybody just bow your head to the Lord. This is renewing. Your words matter. Speak them to him. You have power in your tongue. Don't just think them. Speak them out loud. I give myself to you, Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my way. 
Let my heart be found in you. Just talk to the Lord right now. As we take this bread in our hands, this represents, Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He could have just forgiven us, but he chose to give us everything that he has his whole life, to trust the Father completely. And so we need to honor his sacrifice with our gratitude and our trust. I honor you, Jesus, as Lord. I honor you as the Savior, the righteous one. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that I need not fear that you would ever leave me. Because if you were willing to do that, what good thing would you withhold? Just thank the Lord right now. I thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for me. I thank you for never giving up on me. I thank you for binding yourself in covenant love to me. I belong to you. I am yours. I am your son. I am your daughter. I am in your family. Your spirit dwells within me so that I do not have to live a defeated life. I want your healing to come all the way through me. I don't want to live a low life. I want to rise into the fullness of what you died to give me. I'm not alone. Just say it. I'm not alone. You are my covenant partner. You are my covenant partner. I thank you for your body which was broken for me. Now receive of the bread in remembrance of him. Now we take the cup. Jesus, you told the disciples again and again you were going to die at the hands of sinful men. You were going to die, but you would rise again. You, when you went in the garden, you were in anguish because it wasn't just dying, it was carrying our sin. It was literally carrying our guilt, our shame, our sorrow, our regret. So Jesus, we come here to receive of this new covenant that you made with us. I give my life to you. You are worthy of my life. I want to live to glorify you. I want to live in submission to you. You be my Lord. I renew my surrender and my trust to you. Speak it to him. I renew my surrender and trust to you. I renew my covenant. My life belongs to you. You are my God. And I receive this in remembrance of you. So would you receive it? I just praise him. Just 30 seconds. Whether you're in the overflow or here, just praise him. I thank you, Lord. I renew my covenant with you. Just say it out loud. I renew my covenant with you, Jesus. Jesus.